The lottery ticket slash stash player is huge for fantasy football. It's that player you just have stashed who's likely not going to do anything for your team but has immense upside. You get a few of them every year. You have them stashed away. You do whatever you can to hold on to them. Sometimes you drop them and then you pick them back up. You drop them, you pick them back up. You play hot potato with them. You have a few stashes you like. You take turns with them. There's a process to this. A lot of people like to stash players and hoard them to see what happens with one or two spots with their bench, especially with the IR spots, and sometimes they hit. And when that player hits, they hit big, and we saw that today. And you know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. We saw it with Keaton Mitchell. We've been talking about him all year long, week in and week out. And the reason why is because the upside was immense. And you got a taste of it today on nine carries. You got a taste of the speed. You got a taste of the burst. You got a taste of why this team likes Keaton Mitchell. And you know why now. A lot of people were stashing him way before I was talking about him on this channel because he was on IR. I was waiting for that time. The time came, and it was time to talk about Keaton Mitchell. But looking at Keaton Mitchell today, when he went off, it was nuclear. It happened. Nine carries, 138 yards, and a touchdown. Also caught a ball for negative four yards, but that's still some fancy production. But still, he went off. We saw it. 15.3 yards per carry, and it wasn't in mop-up time. It was in the third quarter. They had to lead. They were up, but it wasn't all in mop-up time. He had that huge run. Some people are trying to throw shade at that. It was all on that one run. It was all on that one explosive play. It was all late in the game. You know what? Expect that from a UDFA player who's coming back from two injuries, just getting some opportunity. He only had one touch prior to that. You kind of expect them to get their first few touches in the end of a game. In the third quarter, you would kind of expect that. He got his work, and he took the ball and ran with it. No pun intended there. And he went off, and that's what we were expecting. That's when you expect the nuclear bomb to happen. You That's when you expect it to drop. And it did. It happened. Now we got to watch him going forward. And the reason why we were waiting so long into the year one is he was hurt. He was on IR for a long time, up to October 4th. He was sitting there, and we saw him come back from IR, and we know the usual ramp-up happens. The player comes off IR. They're a rookie. They're a late-round rookie, UDFA, and we have to wait for them to ramp up, get some touches. The team tests them out on the field, see how they run, and then he gets his opportunity. He gets that one catch for nine yards, and then he comes back with a hamstring. He gets the hamstring. He's out. Then we're waiting for him to come back again. We got a long wait with him. We had to. We had to wait because of the injuries, because of this. It was unfortunate. It was unforeseen. And when he got that hamstring, it was labeled as week to week by the coaching staff. They didn't know. It did not look good initially. And you know what? We got blessed because it wasn't week to week. It was more day to day. It wasn't too long. And then he was finally back. Came back this week, blows up with 20.4 fantasy points on nine touches, one target. And you say, that's not that much. He didn't own the workload. He wasn't expected to. You know why? Because he's been out all those games. He's been out all those games, a UDFA running back, waiting for his crack at some touches. That's what we were waiting for. Got his first crack against Detroit, hurt his hamstring. Then we had to wait for him to come back. Now he's back. Now he's able to do some work. He would have went nuclear against the Cardinals because everybody goes nuclear against the Cardinals, especially his teammate Gus Edwards, because that's what you do. He would have went off last week if he was on the field. If he wasn't hurt, he would have went off last week. Now he got his opportunity. Third quarter, had some runs. Now everybody's talking about it. And I know because the views are just going wild on this channel here. And we got to talk about it. And we're going to talk about them some more throughout this week. Because we can. Because we can. We talk about the waiver wire. Keaton Mitchell getting it done. Look at him here. 437 speed. UDFA. But worked his way up the depth chart all off season long. Looked good in minicamp. Looked good in training camp. 
Then we got the preseason, and he did what he did today. He did what he did today. And you got that home run hitting speed that creates a different dynamic than every single running back on that roster. Something they don't have, something they need. They need to pop off the step. They need that home run hitter. They have that. Pairs well with Gus Edwards. That veteran hammer between the tackles, the jack of all trades, the master of none. You throw Keaton Mitchell in there as the speed pitch, as the home run hitter, the guy that's going to get it done when you need it. That's where he is right now. And now you're looking at Keaton Mitchell like, what to do now? What to do now? Because the inevitable happened. It happened. It doesn't always happen with these prospects. But we had some good trend lines here with how quickly he rose up the depth chart in training camp, how quickly he showed off in preseason. We had those injuries that set him back a lot. And now he came back and quickly got his opportunity. He's going to get more opportunities because why don't you give the running back more opportunities after this? Doesn't mean he's going to be the main guy. Doesn't mean that. Someone's going to say in the comments that he's not going to be. But I'm already saying it here, B-Rabbit style on top of you because Gus Edwards is good. Gus is good because he's a hot hand right now. And you know what pairs well with a hot hand like Gus Edwards is six foot one, 238 pounds? Speed back like Keaton Mitchell. The Ravens might be blossoming here. They might be. These two backs go well with each other. This is something this team needs. This is something Lamar Jackson needs. This goes well. And you know what? everything's not linear. And guess what? Keaton Mitchell's going to be in the mix. And it could be 10 carries a game. And it could be a splash week here and there. But it's free off the waiver wire. It's free. And it might be a headache. But it's free. And it's going to be splash games. Because his profile says that. And what we saw today says that. What we saw in preseason says that. That 4-3 speed though. Mixed with Lamar Jackson. Mixed with those touches. You're going to see that Gus Edwards is not dead because we're not saying that. We got some crazy matchups here on the horizon. We got the Niners in the fantasy playoffs. We got Cleveland next week. You know what some of these tougher matchups, they might call out the changeup. They may call out Keaton Mitchell and say, hey, let's see if we can get something on the edge here. Let's see if we can strike this lottery ticket. After all, he is the lottery ticket running back that we've been talking about. We also have some decent matchups coming up with the Chargers. And look at the fantasy championship game. Week 17 here, Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins coming up there. So you can either stash him if you're getting ready to go out and miss the playoffs so nobody in the playoffs can have him. Or you get him and you know it's going to be a roller coaster, but you might need him for that game coming up. You might need that. You might need him against Jacksonville against the Rams, maybe even against the Niners in a tough matchup. But again, he's a stash. He's a lottery ticket. Like we said in the first video, every video, he's a lottery ticket. Guess what? Lottery tickets don't always hit. They don't always hit. That's why it's called a lottery ticket. So when you're complaining, every video in the comments, like, hey, we're waiting, we're waiting. Lottery ticket, motherfucker. Lottery ticket. And guess what? It cashed today. It cashed today. And you're looking at him on waivers now. And now you got to blow fab on him. You don't need him because you don't have room. But guess what? Everybody feels like they need him now because he hit. That's Keaton Mitchell for you. We're going to talk about him more this week. If you've been on the Keaton Mitchell train, talk that shit in the comments below. I want to hear about that. I want to hear it loud. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.